All in all, for my money, we had an extremely successful transfer winner. Once again, being able to wheel and deal players in and out. And generally speaking, I would say strengthen this squad massively. Now, how we're going to fit those players in, given the homegrown requirements, should we fall into the same trap as the other Swedish sides did last season, is an entirely different matter. But today, really, it's about getting and hitting the ground running. We've got 12 league games to do today, because that will get us up to the point where we'll find out whether we're actually going to be in Europe or not next season. And really, that is the hugest thing that's on the line. We start things off today, hopefully, we'll be flying by the end. Of course, if you have been enjoying the series up to this point, drop a like. That would be mag bloody nificent. Um, moving swiftly on today because we've got a lot to cover. So today we start off firstly against Sirius at home, which is going to be a tough one. Uh, obviously, with our slightly tweaked tactical idea, we'll talk about that briefly in a second as well, just to catch you up on that. Now, in terms of expectations as to what I want out of this season, last year I felt like we were a side that were capable of getting top five, and that is exactly what we did, uh, considering we were expected to come ninth. This year, our season prediction puts us at seventh, so we have definitely strengthened. But you can see really that between sort of Malma and I would say more like AIK, that seems to be the same sort of area that we're in. It's kind of much of a muchness in that kind of area. It really feels like it's the top four that it takes that little extra bit to step up into. However, I do believe with the players we've got that maybe there is a chance that we can secure automatic qualification. I really don't think we're going to be winning a title this year either. We're just not ready yet, but we're definitely moving in the right direction. And speaking of the right direction, we had two players on the next gen list. Kiriaku at 16 and of course Isvan Noj at 24 on the list as well. And him, he just got his first uh, Serbia cap as well. So we've got lots of new caps coming in. It's an exciting team. It really is. But as for us, this is going to take a little shuffling to sort of sort out the new system. And I'll explain again in a second, but hopefully we can sort this team out. Yeah, I genuinely don't believe it's going to be that much of an issue for us to have this team the way that I want this year. Provided we have a full homegrown bench, uh, we have Denaire in goal, which I'm actually fine with. And then we don't have Makacek on the bench because that just takes up a meaningless, like, foreign player slot for Makacek when he's on there. And then we have Usic in the back line. That'll be enough to allow us to pretty much play whoever we want and then rotate players in and out. Because when you look at who we've got here with the likes of Shatan Ura, Garcia, Fafana, Castilla, uh, Emmanuel John, Ineson, Melaleke, but also the likes of Yassir Yakub and, of course, Eder Sierra. Um, he and Duda will kind of flip in and out of the squad. So when one of them's in the squad, the other one won't be at all. But I feel like that's still going to give us plenty of options in there as well. As for the tactical change that we made, obviously, we've still got the other tactic knocking about, which we can use. I just wanted to try something out, basically, that I'd heard. And it looked really good in the cup matches that we tried it in. And I think it just allowed a bit more space for the, for the more attacking players to operate. And it just allowed Vaka to sit there and just farm rating over match and just spray balls around really nicely with some of the players he's got. And it just made us way more strong defensively. And that's something we really did lack at times last year. Now, with us having 12 matches to get through today, because we want to get up to the point of finding out who wins the cup, of course, I do wonder if that means we may not, we have to may have to forego the second live com as a proper live com. But we definitely want to do this one. We'll have to play it by ear. We'll see how long it takes to get through the matches after all. Because I have a haircut later and I bloody need it. But I'm a massive fan of the team we've assembled, especially that strike force. I just I really like like this setup of players and i'm very curious to see what they can do and sirius is one of the well one of the serious teams who as you can see are fielding bench which is good to see maybe they have finally rectified that now that it's our first full season here or technically last season was kwasi with root look on the edge of the box here kwasi's gone for it unfortunately trifunovic would have been the better option as vaka Back for Travunovic. Goes for goal. Well saved early days. He's always there to receive. Just drags one of their midfielders deep to try and mark him. And it just opens that space up behind when we can finally play that pass in there. Take our time about it. We don't have to rush. We just need to find the right pass. And that is some ball from Kuasi. And Kiriaku could drop this all the way across. And Nodge is on the end of it. Isvan Nodge. Urebru 1. EK Sirius nil. His first goal for the club. And we lead here. What a cross. The two new boys lining up brilliantly. Other thing this tactic does really well with this extra, with the RPM, is possession. We've got 70 percent possession so far in this game because we just hold on to it and we're way more composed when we're on the ball as and dies now bombing forward can he pull it back for someone perhaps he's got kiriaku in there he's been fouled and it's a spot kick for us after just 14 minutes to go 2-0 up against sirius remember last season we did beat sirius home and away but we were extremely lucky to win both matches we were very much the worst side kuasi from the spot and it is 2-0 after 14 minutes oh this is looking very interesting indeed back inside silver's through it's a big chance and it's a good save from den air kuasi with the cross martin Oh, just wide. I mean, as first halves go, that is quite something. I know there's the pen in there, but that's still an absolute domination. It will still be a big question of whether we can hold our nerve in the second halves of games like this. That's very, very important as well. But I feel like we're now much more in a position to do so, especially with our ability to hold onto the ball way easier and just be so much less vulnerable to counterattacks. That's one of the key things for me. This is a good example of that, right? What would often happen is we'd get the ball in these wide areas and with our wingbacks being pushed so far up and all of our aggressive midfielders, we would basically have... Um, obviously, Kuasi would also be pushed up because he would be a centre mid as well. There'd be basically no one this side of the ball if the ball is headed away. And usually our opponents would have midfielders there, which means that very often we'd be opening ourselves up to counterattacks where our opponents would get one good header away. It would 
bypass our entire midfield and all of a sudden we'd have our back three faced against their entire attacking force and you saw how many times we conceded goals now the issue i'll say the issue the good thing about this style is that when that ball is headed away vaca will almost never go past sort of here and he's almost always there to either make an interception and recycle the possession or at least provide that first block and that first barrier to entry towards our back four hopefully we'll see some examples today but that's really what i like about having him there uh, and he's just so useful around the club Dudow's ball in headed away right almost exactly like that Obviously, the ball got through to him there, but what would happen before is that Vaca or the other, the AP would be up here, and all of a sudden, we'd be on a complete counter-attack, whereas now, even if the ball gets through to this guy, he wasn't able to dribble out of defense with the ball, and instead, he's now back goal side straight away, and we immediately kill the attack and actually win the ball back high up the pitch. Nodge, with the strike as well, and it's going to go out for a corner, I think, to us there, and that's, to me, what makes this system way better. Dudow, once again, stretching people and driving past them, finds Nodge into the space. We've got bodies coming forward. Dudow, just sees that right pass. That little cutting ball. Vaca round the side for Nodge. Again, over the bar. Vaca fires another one to the channel for Dudow. What a pass. Oh, it's back in for Nodge. And Kuasi tries to bend one over the crossbar again. Round the side for Dudow. Oh, lovely flick around the side for Nodge. Can he get it back across for someone? He, can't. he finds one, Martin, and it's 3 0. <laughs> a Rebru 3, EK Series 0. They are linking up superbly well. It just looks like a whole unit of a team. Beautiful football. Vaca fires across in. And Usic is there, and it's actually 4-0. It's 4-0 on the opening day. Samir Usic now with the goal, and another great delivery from Vaca. Just one good pass here. Oh, my goodness. Martin, it's a good save again. Buhali. Ball across, and it's a goal off the post. David Lazar, one bat for Sirius. First real, one of their first openings of the game. It's annoying not to keep a clean sheet, really. Vaca just pops a nice cheeky one in here. Oh, my God, it's 5. It's 5-1. Five, Juan Martin now makes it 5. We really did establish that lead again, and Vaca has had an absolute worldy of a day, as have most of the players on the pitch, honestly. Well, I'd say if you ever want an example of feeling like we might be onto something this season, both tactically and with some of our recruitment, I, I would say this is very much that, as it looks like it's going to be a Rebru 5 EK Sirius, who only missed out on the title narrowly last season, won. And it was a domination. Just steady. We didn't really go for any blank patches in this game. It was just steady chances over the full match without really any breaks for that. We were just relentless. Total control of the ball. Gave up that one little opening, which is a bit of an annoying one, as it does cost the defender. A 9.6 for Vaca today. 132 passes completed by himself. He also got two assists in this game as well. But it was way more than that. He looks like he could be... The Moo Man might be taking things over at this point. Two goals from Martin as well. Uh, Noj looked really good in this game. Yes, I think we're onto something. And um, Kiriaki was fantastic before I took him off. And I do think the couple of changes I made probably didn't help us at the end of this game. But, you know, you've got to make those sort of changes with all the fixtures coming up. So that is a phenomenal start to the season. Oh, so uh, 11 more matches and then we find out whether we're in Europe at all next year. So this is going to be fun. Let's dig in. Slips it into the channel for Sierra, though. That's fine. Can he just drop this across for someone? He does. Noj is on the end of it and it's 1-0. Orebru 1, Degaforge 0. And well, Isfan Noj looks great. Sierra grabs a, an assist 12 minutes into his debut here. That rotation is going to be so useful. Kwasi, one-touch stuff. Need that good pass. Kwasi's throw. Slips it on the side for Nodge again. And it's 2-0. I mean, this team is just biding their time, waiting for their moments, no stress on the ball, and just taking them when they find the opportunities. Nodge already three goals in the league this season. And die with room to turn as well. Slips it through to Nodge. And it's going to be 3-0. And it's a hat-trick for Isvan Nodge. I mean, goodness me. This team is actually looking extremely well drilled and tight at the moment. Vaca just operating in that space. It's a gorgeous little ball between the lines. Sierra fires across in and a dies on the end of it for 4-0. I, I don't know, but that's two assists today for Eder Sierra and a die with a lovely headed goal makes it... We scored nine goals in two games. Amri to take the corner with the left foot this time instead as Martin Howe makes it 5-0. Dear Lord, what have we accidentally created this season? Lovely assist from Amri. Amri on his left foot again. He's only just come off the bench as Martin's header is now flicked over. Oh my God, it's six. It's six nil and Elvedin Jaferovic makes it. We've scored 11 times this season already. That's a little bit ridiculous. Orebru six, Degaforge nil. Over four XG. They had one shot in the whole 90 minutes and it didn't account for even a single point of XG. It was one header from the edge of the area. This is what I mean. It's so defensively stable, you just shut everybody out and look unbelievable on the counter-attack. So, big shout-out to Captain Ginger, whose idea it was to try playing an RPM there. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a turn-up that is. Of course, we're still not top of the league, as other teams around us have played more matches, but to be on a plus-10 goal difference already at this stage is utterly stupefying. The fact is, EK Sirius and Degaforce are not bad sides by any means. I mean, I know that they're round down there at the moment, but they were right up there in the battle for all sorts of things last year, and we've just put 11 goals past them in two matches. Flips one of the channel for Nodge. This should be a much more winnable match than the two we've already had so far, but I expect we actually... I hope we will win, but I feel like we're going to win this game like 1-0 or something with an absolute, like, scraper of a result, because it feels like we need
need teams to come at us a little bit for our other st tactical style of work as well. But we'll see. Vaca pops it over the top, comes down to Juan Martin, and he slots of 1-0 up after 15 minutes. Never mind, he said. Hugo Vaca with a lovely assist, Juan Martin, and it's 1-0 Rebru and the, the, I mean, hey, we have the momentum of a runaway freight train. Quasi thinks a good ball in, and Martin's on the end of it. It's off the bottom. Never mind, it's over the line. Juan Martin scores again. Rebru 2, Varberg 0. Finds Lindstrom, there's a run beyond. If you can find it, he does. It's Amri, might have to go from distance. What a finish from Mohamed Amin Amri. I really wish we'd been able to sign this guy permanently, but he's come off the bench twice now and looked fantastic in both games. 3-0. All three matches this season, we've looked utterly dominant. Like, completely on top. Barely giving our opponents a chance and creating tons of stuff ourselves. Now, obviously, we've had a match every week for the first three week matches of the season. It does now start to go to, you know, every two matches a week for the next spell, which is where I think the rotation is going to very much matter. But just getting off to this kind of start with nine points on the board already it, and looking so good in doing so is, for me, in a massive step in the right direction. It just makes us look extremely good. We're still not top of the league as things stand, as your Gordon have actually hit the ground running very, very nicely so far this season. But that goal difference suggests that we're right there. Now, I still don't think we're going to be favourites for the title this year by any means, because we haven't played any of the... I said we haven't, but we've not played against your Gordon yet. We've not played against EFK. We've not played against some of the Hammerby as well. And I think that's what really will decide a lot of things. However, we do look a lot better than last year. And I think that surely qualifying for Europe, if we carry on playing like this, shouldn't be much of an issue for us. But that's good at least. Trifunovic, Kiriaku, to Ndai. We've had a poor game so far, but Kwasi's through and Kwasi scores. And that's out of nothing. We've not been that good in this game, but we still managed to find a way to take the lead here. And it's Kwasi with the goal. Very important one at that. To Vaka. Kwasi, round the side for Nodji's on the side. This time is he. And he's, he's in the back of the net. I think that is going to be 2 0. It's found Nodge with the goal. Second half, I just let them off the leash a little bit in terms of turning off work ball in the box and they've just managed to find those spaces more. Vaca just to dink one in and Martins there and it's put over the line at the back post by Jaferovic for 3-0. I think that's going to be offside. It's not. It's 3-0. My goodness. What a second half. Okay, so you can see that in the second half I changed something. So basically what we did was we were terrible in that first half. I think we had like two shots or something and they'd actually done okay. They hadn't actually hit the target or anything but they were looking like the better side and all I did was I turned off work ball in the box. I think what was happening was they were so defensive that it wasn't allowing us to play between the lines and do much whereas occasionally Occasionally, you sometimes will just let them off the leash and actually let them just play a few passes around and start going for some slightly longer and more aggressive passing. And that's how I got the both goals for Kwasi and Noj. And that really just set us alight at that point. And you can really see that we took over. And again, it's four unbelievably good wins. We've not scored less than three goals in a game this season in the league. Like, we're due for a genuinely bad game soon, but 60 we've got a plus 16 goal difference after four matches this season. We sit second in the league on account of having played one less match than everybody else. But we do look a little bit special at the moment. <laughs> Asifa fires one across. It's a great header off that. Wow. Andreas Hansen, 1 0 Elfsborg. First real opening of the game for them. We've had a few openings, but that is, uh, we have to come from behind for the first time this season. Yeah, unfortunately, that was the only goal of the game. So our, our record continues of basically giving our opponents nothing. Um, They actually just took nothing today. And I don't think we were as good going forward, but we were still pretty damn good. Unfortunately, we went down to 10 men for the final 20 minutes of the game as Dudow went off with an injury and I had to move Vats. I just made all our subs. And yeah, it just wasn't quite our day, really. I don't think we were that bad. I think on another day, we probably win this game too. It's just one of those things, really. But not every game can be perfect. We still find ourselves sitting in second, but unfortunately now we are four points off the top as Jorgo and are flying away at the moment. Uh, we still only considered two goals this season. So we do look very, very strong. And I think over the course of a full season with this kind of statistical output, there's no way we won't be up there in that top five for my money, unless something m magnificently awful happens. But what about this injury? Twisted ankle. Oh, that's a month out though for Dudal. So Sierra's going to have to play an insane amount of football over the next month, which is a worry, to be fair. It's over the top. Videnez is through and it's a goal for Hammerby inside four minutes. We now trail away here as well. Okay, lads, we've got to pick this one up a little bit. We had those good start, but we need to keep the start going. Videnes into a bit of space, pops it back inside, and it's in. It's just in. Martin Grenholm. Hammerby, I mean, they don't deserve to be 2-0 up here. Uh, it's much like the last game again. Zhan Zhao from the spot. Scores. 3 -0. This is just like last year against Hammerby, where we were okay and lost 3-0. Or was it 4? I can't remember. Kwasi delivers it. Martin. It's in. We finally got to go back here. One Martin scores, but this is just a bit unfortunate, really. Can we get another one back here? Sierra pops it across for Kwasi. Bends one, and it's in. It's Hammerby three, Rebru two. We're finally getting something more out of this game, finally. Fair play. In the end, they just created that little bit more. I think the penalty did a lot of heavy lifting in that game, but I think that's still two games, which I don't think we were deserving to lose both of them that we just kind of have. Um, 
Seems to have just managed to find a little bit of a way through. It's just one of those things that happens. We, we just took us a little while to actually start taking our chances with uh, Martin and then Kowasi grabbing them. It's far from the end of the world, um, but we are still now down to third place in the league as Hammerby actually go above us with that victory. I still think statistically, we're still the best side in the league at the moment over the first three matches. It's just one of those things that's just not quite gone our way. I think we can really get our hammer down and just look what we could do in the second half of the season as well. If we're right up in there already, I think we could make up a lot of ground once we're back to those weekly fixtures. Plenty of bodies in the box to aim for. She needs to find one of them. It's deflected, and it's surely there at the back post for Marty. Oh my god, how has he missed that? Kiriaku, nicely positioned for it, though. Gets it back again. This is what I want to see. Fire it across. It's a... It's in. This time, Isvan Noj gets on the end of it. 1-0 to a Rebro. This is more like it. We've looked fantastic. We have the wingbacks to finally deal with their really narrow system and just dominate them, hopefully. Sierra's on the overlap. Just needs to drill this across the box. He does. Martin! And... Oh no! <laughs> how in the... F how has he missed that? End of the channel for Johansson. First time their fullbacks have really managed to get forward today, honestly. Grant pops it up. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Bit of an unfortunate one again today, honestly. Like, played them really, really well in this match. Um, hit, the fact that we hit the post twice and that second post hit from Nodge was absolutely killer for us. Uh, we should have won this match uh, again. The, statistically still happy. We're playing well. It's just things like that. You just can't miss those chances. And they're giving up an annoying one where Denaire just wasn't very good for that one and allowed Slavkov to score. I'd still much rather be in this situation than where we were last year, where we were just not looking good in matches. Whereas at the moment, we look very, very good. Just need to sort of tune a couple of things out of the team a little bit. Half a yard. Finds and die. Could pop it back inside for him potentially here. Kiriaku ball across and it's smashed into the back of the net by Seku Kuasi and we lead away at the league leaders and I would say deservedly so. And this this is more like the response that we needed from the guys. Clips one of the channel for Kiriaku. We still lead, but it's looking tetchy for us. We've not been fantastic today. Kiriaku, Nodge, and it's 2-0. I, I, I don't know where that's come from, but it is 2-0 to us here. I've just decided to stretch, like, try to open us up a little bit to grab the second goal, and we do exactly that. 2-0. Erlinson tries it. Nodge, somebody put the shot in. Amri, Nodge over the line. I think that's going to be off. So no, it's not. It's 3-0 to Rebru here. And Nodge scores the goal that wraps up a very, very big away win, and we look a little bit better today, you could say. Well, I think in the end, we probably did just about deserve to edge that thanks on that last goal but really it was a very very tight game for the most part the red card i think gave us the freedom at the end there uh, two goals for Norwich, one for kowasi it's nice to see us back a bit um i think in the end statistically we did actually deserve the win it just took a little bit um but before that it was very very tight so i think it does kind of make up for some of the other results we've had pretty much the game against hammerby in a way to go three nil away winners at our probably biggest rival for the league potentially was a, that's a really strong result it just reels them back in not only that but it keeps us actually moves us up to third in the end we're only three points off the top of the league now plus 17 goal difference. <laughs> That's one of the best things about this, really. A lot of bodies fall for AIK here. And it's a big chance at the back post and they lead after 15 minutes. Carl Fredrik Sonnes. Frustrating. We've actually controlled this game quite a lot so far. And it's just like the game against EFK. We need to turn this one around. Kuasi fires that cross in. And Martin, sorry, Martin immediately grabs us an equaliser. We can kind of go back to square one. Seven goals for him this year. Eight for Norge. That strike force is really combining lovely. Everyone's a bit tired at the moment. And I think that's why the game's kind of gone a bit dead as Kuasi breaks through. And Kuasi hits the post with it. I don't want to concede here because we've been the better team. We deserve the win. Oh, no, we can't afford that red card, Edda. Balaz now drops across in. Usage clear. Oh, there's the goal. Fabio Gdini. Ah, uh, well, I um, can just write this one off, unfortunately. The red card completely cost us. We were drumming for that that winner, and then we just do something stupid. Yeah, a frustrating one. Um, Basically, you can see that up until the red card, we were doing absolutely fine. Had a great chance, in fact, right before that. And then we just pissed it away because of stupidity. But the worst thing is now we're going to be missing both left wing backs for the next game. We do have a week in between, so maybe there's a chance that Dudao could be fit, but... That's really frustrating. Um, it kind of feels like we've actually done okay this season, and it feels like we've we've got less points than we should have, which is still, of course, a better position to be in than playing badly. It's just a frustrating one when I feel like we should be much, much closer to the top of the league right now than we are, and it just had those annoying little things happen that have just cost us, and it's not quite gone. I feel like we've not had the rub of the green. We need a good block on this from Erlinson. He's doing his best. He's basically the third or fourth choice. As Denaire has missed it. Are you serious? It's just another one of these games. Play well, miss chance, concede first opportunity. Or opportunity. <laughs> well, here we go. Martin. Nosh has got the right side here. He now digs the goalkeeper. Oh my god. He can score those, but he can't score from three yards. BK Egger won. Rebru won. Ninth goal of the season in the league for Isvan Nosh. Wow, what a finish. Oh my god. Can you stop getting red cards? That'd be freaking lovely. Fires it across, and we immediately concede. How has he won the ball there? He's literally gone through his body and won the ball when he should just be bringing that down out of nowhere. What is that about? 
Of course they can skip. <laughs> what an error. That is ridiculous. Don't really know what to say. Another completely even match that we've managed to lose. Uh, yeah, it's just not happening for us at the moment. Uh, goalkeeper an absolute meh for both, for two of their goals. Uh, red card again. Two second, two yellow cards for Erlinson. That's now we're down to our fourth choice left wing back today. We fall all the way down to fifth in the league and are already eight points off the top of the division now. Uh, just madness. When you look at the, I'm going to show you it before we, after the uh, the twelfth match. It's just madness that we're so far off at this point. Um, considering that we won our first, we won our first four matches in a row, and now we've got four points from our last six games. Just inexplicably and i feel like we're very very hard done by but we're just going to get our heads down and keep plugging away because this is just this will not do but so many bodies in there we just need someone fires it in martin so many bodies kwasi on the end of it and we lead one nil away uh, finally we take the lead in the match kwasi seventh goal of the season he has definitely been set alight by this and rona and die is out injured for a little while as well unfortunately georgia with space again pings one through we need the return pass though there it is lovely ball through for nodge again can he score this time dinks the keeper and this time he makes no mistake it is two nil to Arebru. what a first half this is more like the Arebru we saw at the start of the season that's an embarrassing pass and now it's actually provided space through the middle and now we're going to concede off this aren't we I just, that's the first shot of the game. So that, that is their first shot of the match. Tackled again. Back to Vaca. Back to Kwasi. Martin saved. And the keeper's actually, I think, saved that into his own net. It's 3 1. We're back in front again with the same goal margin. Thank goodness for that. Looks like we are going to get this result, but we've still made it hard for ourselves. Lovely little build up. Kwasi actually acting as the striker at the moment. Martin around the side. Speaking of Notch, and he smashes another one in, and it's 4 1. 11 goals in the league this season. Sierra just looking for space for a cross to make a fifth goal would be lovely. And it's all the way through. Martin's block comes back to Notch, and he scored a hat trick, I think. That's his second hat trick of the season. It's 5 1 away from home here, and this is a bit more like it. Back for Tudor George. They're giving him space. Pops it across. Deflected and out. Out wide for Sierra, fires it straight back first time. Amory, and it's tipped home by Nodge. I don't know if that's going to be on side or not. I think it is. It's 6-1, and he's scored four of them. So Sierra, the runners just keep going, and now they've got an, we've got an extra man as well. This could get a lot worse, potentially. Sierra, can he fire it across for someone? No, off the rebound, and it's put in again by Nodge for his fifth goal of the game, and it's 7-1. This second half has just been off the rails. Nodge from the spot. Scores. He's scored six goals in a single match. It's 8-1, and Isvan Nosh has scored six times in this game. Kalmar won, Rebru 8. <laughs> I said I needed a response. I wasn't quite expecting that. Um, yeah, so Nosh gets six goals in that game. In the second half, I cannot... <laughs> Technically, one was in the first half. He's got six goals in 45 minutes. That is unbelievable. <laughs> That's like Emmett Doran numbers. Just the 5 XG in this game. And bear in mind, their red card was in the, well, 80-something minute. We still got two more after that. That's one of the most bizarre and unbelievable matches I've ever seen. Uh, to come off some poor performances and to put eight past the team away from home. I really do feel like this tactic on its day does have the ability to do that. That's just utterly astonishing. He's got a double hat trick. Well, we may still sit fifth, but our goal difference is plus 21 after 11 matches. I don't know how we're fifth in this league. That is an absolute sham. We play Bromo Poikana next. If we win that, we'll surely get ourselves back into third spot, hopefully. Kuasi pops the corner in. Martin, and over the back post is Jaferovic, and it is 1-0 to Arebru away at Bromo Poikana. We continue that run. I want to make sure we win this one too and keep that momentum going. Kuasi again. Martin near post, and it's two. We've created other stuff, but we've had to rely on set pieces to get us going today. It's 2-0. Martin scores another, and I think we're hopefully going to head to third today, which would be nice. Pulls it back for Kuwasi. It's 3-0, and Seiku Kuwasi, eighth goal of the season for Kuwasi. We've scored 11 times in our last two games. Tudor Jorge from the spot, drills at home. 4-0 Orebru. <laughs> we're back with a bang. I'll, I'll very much take that victory. 4-0 away win. Uh, Jaferovic, Martin, Kuwasi, and then, of course, the penalty. It's weird, really. Um, some of the goals, we, the goals we scored, I think, other than the penalty, were some of the lower quality chances that we had in this game. But nevertheless, we've got the result. Another four goals scored. Just tremendous work to suddenly go from where we were to having scored 12 in two now. That makes a hell of a difference. Kwasi again was superb. And in spite of all that, after our first 12 matches, we're, we're sat on 22 points and we have a plus 25 goal difference, but we're still only fourth in the league. Still only five points off the top as well, though. And I think that's really the key thing because I think that's the case. And then, of course, don't forget, in a second, we're going to find out, will we get Europe this year? That could be a massive spanner in the works. So we'll see. Let's check the stats first. So you can see just kind of how unlucky we are to be as far down the league as we are. We, we actually should be like five points clear at the top. Uh, we've underperformed by three points, which is kind of mad when you think that we've actually scored eight more goals than we should have done 
and only conceded two more than we should have done to be three points off like that. But I think it's just that those goals have occurred in weird matches where they've always been like, you know, those extra five and six and seven goals rather than in games where we kind of needed them. And Vesteros as well. They're, th they're above us in the league, but should have 10 points less than us. It's very early, obviously. But man, I, I still think this team might have a chance at winning the title this year if we really get our heads down and don't get any more serious injuries. But Europe will definitely have a an effect on that. So let's find out if we're going to be in Europe. Right, my friends, here we go. Svenska Kuppen, the cup final. Do we attend? At this point, why not, eh? We've not got a match. We might as well watch the game. This is a rarity. I think this might be the first time ever on my well, YouTube save that I've ever shown highlights of a match that we're not involved in. But this might be quite fun since we've not got a proper life. We might as well. Let's do this. Let's watch the game. Obviously, you'll still only see highlights of goals and stuff, but I think this is a way more fun way to decide whether we're going to be in Europe or not. Remember, if Degaforce win, we don't get Europe. If Hammerby win, we do get Europe. That's the simple situation. Let's crack on. Slip through. Vidnez is in. He scored against us earlier this season. Can he score today? And he smashes it in the back of the net. And it's 1-0 to Hammerby in the cup final. And if they can hold out now, we will get ourselves Conference League football. That could actually disrupt us at the second half of the year. But I, I don't know. I just want to play in Europe with them. I think we could do great things. Then it's long range strike perhaps from Halverson. Oh, he's gone for it. Yes, it's 2-0. Halverson scores. And I think we're looking very good for having some European football this year. Hammerby have saved us. Hey, if we take that defeat to them in the league and it means we get this i'll be all right with that there we go degaforge nil hammerby two we are gonna be in europe this season hammerby did us a massive favor terrible second half when nothing happened at all but they got the win and that's what matters they're gonna lift the cup hopefully we'll lift the cup at some point in this save too but the point is we're gonna be playing in european football and i think we deserve that uh, that it could potentially disrupt our chances at winning the title this year, I would say, because it is going to cause a lot more fixture congestion. And there we go. Rebro qualify for the Conference League. You love to bloody see it. Hang on, how much money does that cost us? <laughs> Oh, that's the cup. I thought that was the reward for getting the conference league. Here's 450 quid, lads. Go buy yourself some sweets. Four straight wins, then one win in five, you know, six matches out of nowhere, and four defeats that I just don't think we deserve. And then back to back wins with scoring another 12 goals over the line. It's been a very weird day, but I do still think like this system does create some really fun goals. And I'm very much enjoying us being able to score absurd amounts at the moment. Particularly as both of those wins most recently there were away from home, which is a bit of a worry for me, uh, which was a bit of a worry for me, rather. But it was nice to be able to get that one there. I think we've, we deserve to be higher up the league and i'm hoping that we can very much do that so next episode of course we start off against vesteros who are of course directly above us and i suspect that there's gonna be potentially some europa conference league action going on in there too i think we're strong enough to get to the groups and have a little crack at that to be fair um this team has got something about it and i'm really enjoying it at the moment still keeping my eyes out for some new signings but at the moment i love this team dearly and i'm very very happy to be here so if you have enjoyed this episode i hope you have what's, what's not to like we're in europe we're smashing goals in double hat trick it's lovely news drop a like that'd be lovely i stream on twitch tuesdays thursdays and saturdays so go follow that as well subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys soon for some more lovely action with the boys at rebru hold your gun capybara bye bye